Hello, my name's Simon Crafer. We're back in the MotoGP paddock in Austria for this week's Tech Talk. And uh, I'm going to take a little bit of a risk here and uh, do a different Tech Talk this week. Let me know what you think, and uh, if you like it, we can drop in one of these occasionally, uh, or not, if you don't. So we're going to speak about um, inertia and the effects of inertia and the gyroscopic effect in MotoGP. And the reason I thought of this was you saw Joan Zarco's bike tearing through the gravel at well over 200, over 200 kilometres an hour for sure. And you saw both effects. And uh, that was the inertia, how that thing was not going to slow down for a while. And so that's the inertia. Um, and you saw the gyroscopic effect, how the bike doesn't want to fall over, it wants to go straight. So I want to explain how these really affect the handling and uh, make the job hard for, if they're not right, for the rider in the paddock. So uh, I'm not an engineer, but I've had to battle these effects for so many years. I at least know how to explain the feelings. And I've spoken to a few engineers again today to get some ideas to give to you. So let's start with inertia. I mean, the easiest way to describe it is... Um, you know, or the effects of it is if you push a car in your garage or it's broken down and it takes a bit of energy to get going but once it's moving you can let it go and it'll go for a while and uh, actually take a bit to stop that's inertia you know how it just wants to keep going and um, do you feel these effects on the bike uh, especially when you get to the end of a straight and you need to stop you know because it's going to go a long way without the brakes so you need to scrub off that inertia fight against it the brakes have to do that but there's also the mass of spinning parts that have inertia as well. Like the, the bigger the crank, the more inertia. It, it takes a bit of um, speed, a bit of uh, energy to get that crank spinning. But when you close the throttle, it's going to spin for a while because of the inertia, the, the mass there spinning around. So how, does, uh, how do these affect um, the motorcycle when you're on there? So... Um, the crank weight, that inertia, and the wheels, um, I mean, they've worked recent years on lightening wheels and discs and everything, and it's made a big difference. Um, the crank weight, I had the pleasure of testing factory superbikes back in the 90s when I was riding for manufacturers, and we'd t turn up to the pre-season tests and have different crank weights in the motorcycle. So, um, and the effects are... The, the lighter you go, the quicker the motorcycle accelerates, you know. Say you're sitting there in neutral and you rev it, the, it, it, it builds RPM quicker. Rum, rum. It feels faster, the, the, the sensation. But it's harder to control because that throttle feel is uh, much snappier. For example, it's, with the heavier one, it's easier to have a connection with that rear tyre because you can adjust it and it doesn't just snap out of line. And the light one's very hard uh, to stop a high side. We didn't have our electronics. Um, and then the light crank, um, they've known this for, ba for years, back in two-stroke days, um, there was a clear, um, uh, it was easy for the engineers to say, see the heavier the crank, the more inertia, the better the top speed because it's not affected as much by all the... It, it has energy. Once it gets up to speed, it has energy and it keeps going. They have a clear, better top speed. Um, affected by less, basically. It pushes through little problems on the way. Uh, takes more energy to get it there. So there's a balance, you know. Um, the, also, with the heavy crank, I found, um, was the, my first experience of the gyroscopic effect. So that crank spinning and the wheel spinning everything everyone knows this uh, gyroscopic effect feeling because the faster you go on your bicycle the easier it is to take your hands off the bar because that spinning mass wants to head straight and uh, a quick experiment please do at the end of this chat get a bicycle stand it up on its back wheel so you've got the front wheel in the air and get a friend to spin that wheel spin it as fast as they can then feel what that effect you'll feel the gyroscopic effect how it it's freaky. So all of those spinning parts in the engine, those spinning wheels and that, you get to the end of a straight. It's not just the inertia going straight ahead. The more mass that's spinning wants, wants to continue straight. And when it's very difficult for the rider to, to make it change direction, make it lie down, which uh, 
you always hear about that. You I mean you, basically the riders fighting that all the way around the track. That effect. It's why they're tired, <laughs> trying to get it to lie down, and they've improved that a lot with uh, when Brembo made the carbon discs. Oh, the first thing I thought was, wow. Through it was a Magello when I first got to try it. Through the fast chicane there, which is a perfect way to test it, you know, a hundred mile an hour chicane, sort of roughly, I think, and you could really feel the bike side to side, like wow, and the added brake performance. Um, so that gyroscopic effect, it's not just the wheels, not just uh, the discs, not just the crankshaft, every spinning part in there. Then they figured out the engineers that if you run the engine backwards, which I believe every MotoGP bike is now that spinning mass of the engine, which is less than wheels and everything, count, cancels out the, the uh, gyroscopic effect of the wheel spinning that way by spinning, but it's a less mass, so it's still there, you know. So then they experimented and went, well, let's put more crank weight on there. And um, look, it's easier for the V4s to add and take off. Let me explain why. If you have a crankshaft and a, an inline four, you've got four uh, big end uh, journals, you know, spinning around in there, uh, you know, so the webs on the crank, so you've got like four uh, spinning around, so you've got more mass. It's longer and um, harder to add that weight to the end because they haven't got enough room, you know, to lean it over and still have a narrow engine. Um, so the, the, f the inline fours, they have their advantages, but maybe their disadvantage there is it's less adjustable, harder to get a crank weight on there. Um, where the V4s, narrower, probably you could get that wide because they're like a V-twin crankshaft. So just two journals, two flying around there, but they have two rods off each one, you know? So the whole engine's narrower. They can afford a bit of space to have a, like Ducati have had for a while, I believe, is a external crank weight that they can change and play with and see what's better. And I believe they've figured out that, well, by spinning it backwards and adding more weight, it actually counteracts the gyroscopic effect of the wheels more by having more weight spinning backwards. Obviously, the first thing I said was, well, but by adding weight, you've got more inertia going straight ahead. And the, and the engineer explained to me, yeah, but we're under the weight limit. So we put weight on the crank, we can take it off somewhere else. The ballast to make it reach, you know, the uh, minimum 157 kilos, they can just take a few kilos off there and add it to, you know what I'm saying, grams or whatever it is. So now we've got those cranks. Um, look, it's um, super difficult to figure this out because if it wasn't, if there was a, an engineer that had found it, the bike would be winning and everyone would copy it. But look at the paddock. They've got all different engines and different weights and how difficult this is, is um, you can see in... Um, how a few years ago Suzuki made a mistake, you know, they're not the only ones, you're like, they made a mistake and it ruined their season, you know, like, because of, I think, a heavier crankshaft, which gives you more inertia, uh, so it's easier to drivability, feel, but if it's spinning forward, handling is going to be harder, and engine brake worse, when you shut that throttle, it's going to push on forward, then what I've noticed in the paddock, that spinning crank mass, they've like, liked it going backwards. It's counted that this is great, but the only negative they've really found is it pushes forward, like I just explained. You know what they've done? I've noticed to counteract that, they've put a valve, an exhaust valve. So when they shut the throttle and it's still bulldozing ahead, the electronics close that exhaust valve and it's like a truck, you know, decelerate and they can adjust that. Um, how's that? So they've got best of both worlds. Um, like I said, I hope you have got an insight on how crazy difficult, with all the technology you've got in the world right now, these guys are the best in the world at it. Like Honda this year, as still, you know, the riders are complaining of too much inertia, you know, so it's obviously a difficult one to figure out. I hope you've enjoyed and uh, little insight. Let me know if you have.